I gotta tell y'all this big thing that is going to pretty much change our lives. <laughs> and it is something that I really, really was against for a long time, okay? I like fought this for I don't even know how long. I even have friends who are doing it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm not that mom, I'm not that girl who would ever do that, but here we are, y'all. Hey, y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I, oh my gosh, why am I so breathy today? I feel like, ugh. Okay, I'm at that point officially where I'm like super breathy in my pregnancy, which, you know, granted, we're in a third trimester at this point, heavy in the third trimester. If I was to guess, I think I'm like 33, 34 weeks this week, maybe even 35. Child, I don't really know. This is my fourth pregnancy. Anyway, if you're new here, hi, my name is Jade. How's it going? Welcome to my channel. I'm a mom, a wifey, a avid beauty lover but above all else i put my faith first christ is lord that's that's me in a nutshell so definitely keep on watching if we're on the same we're on the same vibe so i wanted to do a little get ready with me today because i had multiple things that i wanted to chat with y'all about a little bit of beauty stuff a little bit of mom stuff and also like a new thing that we are venturing into. I'm gonna first start off with skincare. So my face is clean from last night, so I'm not gonna cleanse it again, which I could have, but I usually don't in the morning. I usually go straight to toner and I'm using my Beekman 1802. This is the milkshake toner. This is my go-to. <laughs> I'm using some new stuff today too. So I wanted to use this Make Beauty Subverse Plumping Peptide Serum. It's supposed to visibly plump, restore hydration, and improve firmness and elasticity. All right. Ooh, that's cute. I Look at that color. That's so pretty. I love Make Beauty. They have incredible products. Their makeup and their skincare is really, really good. I use a lot of their stuff. A little pregnancy update, which I just told y'all, I'm like, I don't know, 34, 35 weeks. I just had my last midwifery appointment my prenatal appointment if you didn't know i work with a midwife and i do my births at home this will be my second lord willing home birth water birth unmedicated at home and so we just had an appointment last week now we're gonna start doing i think bi-weeklies at this point or maybe every week at this point can't remember you know how they like pick up the appointments pick up in your like last trimester, it kind of like increases in frequency. And so we are at that stage and I'm using Summer Friday's jet lag mask as my moisturizer today. Everything is good so far. I love working with a midwife because especially having gone to an OBG OBGYN with my first pregnancy versus now being in my fourth, most of my midwife appointments are literally like me and my midwife Tari who's black talking just like sis to sis, right? Like straight, like this woman is a part of my family at this point and we just like catch up on life. And I am so comfortable with her to where like I'm legit, like not just, you know, bringing questions and kind of keeping things so formal, like it's very much so informal. And I can be honest with her about like literally like everything that I'm like going through mentally, spiritually, physically in this pregnancy. And I just love that about this prenatal experience and the same thing I had with her with my last baby um because I worked with her my last pregnancy as well my last home birth and so yeah I just love her and if you want to know more about my home birth experiences or like water birth experiences and like pregnancy and kind of all that kind of stuff I'll definitely link some videos down below if you want to see and kind of like fall go into that a little bit more but that's not really what I'm here to talk about today <laughs> I just want to give you a little update um, at my last appointment, we took some blood. So that's probably the most like intense thing that I have had to do in my prenatal appointments is like draw blood and we do this at my house, literally. And so it's really cute too, because my daughter who's four will be five in July. 
loves being like there at these appointments because she loves to watch Tari like check on the baby and like draw the blood. Like my daughter is really obsessed with doctors and I don't know if like that's just a thing for this age but my daughter is definitely a very like like she's a nurturer like she loves like taking care of people and I can tell whenever like somebody gets hurt or somebody's like in pain or something in the house even like my other sons like I have two other sons that are a little younger than her and anytime somebody gets hurt or whatever she like checks on them but she like wants to see the accident like the injury like she wants to see it she's like very much so like into it so she loves when Tari comes over because she gets to see you know medical care in real life moisturizer is done oh I need to do my eye cream and my vitamin C okay so I'm doing my eye cream I gotta tell y'all this big thing that is going to pretty much change our lives <laughs> and it is something that I really really was against for a long time okay I like fought this for I don't even know how long was so opposed to it I even have friends who are doing it and I'm just like oh my gosh like I'm not that mom I'm not that girl who would ever do that but here we are y'all me and my husband have decided to homeschool our kids. And as I mentioned, like we have a four and a half year old, a two and a half year old, a, I don't know if he, I think he's 20 months, my youngest son whose birthday's in October. So y'all do the math, he's one, but he's like closer to two than one. And we have another baby on the way, I'm due in a few weeks. So, you know, right now we are in this position where we send our two oldest, our four and a half year old and two and a half year old to a Christian private early childhood program, childcare. It's really not childcare, it's preschool. And they operate on a traditional like K through 12 schedule because it's part of a K through 12 system, but it's just the early childhood program part of this school system. And so we love it. I really have enjoyed seeing how much they've grown as they've been at this school and their teachers are amazing and they are constantly um, f being fed spiritually and mentally and just socially and all those things. So I love it. And considering how much childcare costs these days, we actually pay like a very reasonable amount for our children to go to school Monday through Friday. So we pay about seven, seven twenty, seven fifty or so per kid. So about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars a month per child, uh, totally. So fifteen hundred ish, totally for the two to go to school. Granted, again, this is like a K through twelve situation, so it's they have like Christmas break off, they have summer break off. So it's like, it's not necessarily like like a regular daycare, but it's basically that. So it works really well for us because it gives me time to like work on my stuff and like create content and everything like in peace while my husband stays home with our youngest um, and takes care of the house and things like that. So it's a nice balance for us right now. But as we are approaching like, this new baby coming and like my other son getting older and also my daughter potentially going to kindergarten next year, we had to ask ourselves like, okay, like what is the plan? Like, what are we gonna do? Because my initial desire was, we just go keep sending them to this school because it's great. It's everything we want it to be for them. And you know, it's been a great situation. But when I think about, you know, adding on another child into the amount that we pay every month while my husband being at home with our other baby that's coming it, it started to not make sense and when we first put the kids in school we weren't pregnant we started having to ask ourselves you know what's the plan going to be because i wasn't feeling super confident about my daughter being ready for kindergarten based on her recent most recent like school assessment and my daughter is technically like a younger four 
in her class. And so I was open to the idea of like her doing pre-K for again, just so that she could be like an older five when she started her like K through 12 experience. But then when I was talking to her teacher and because this is like a private school, the whole thing for them is like, you know, they really hold themselves to the standard that, you know, once you do pre-K four, like they're confident that the way that they do school and like their curriculum prepares every kid for kindergarten. And so it was like, not necessarily saying that my daughter isn't ready for kindergarten. I just was not feeling super confident at the time that we like were reviewing this assessment. And at the same time, they were like, you need to decide when you wanna do your kindergarten interview and you know, get her registered, get my son Micah registered for the next fall. And like, you know, it's like March. And I'm just like, I don't know. Like I don't have a feeling of like peace about this, which I know means that God hadn't given me the answer as to what we're really supposed to do. So I'm asking God like, okay, Lord, I had a plan, but maybe my plan isn't your plan. So I'm also getting like low key emotional, obviously I'm pregnant, but I'm also getting low key emotional that like, I don't wanna make this, you know, very serious decision on whether or not my daughter starts pre-K, you know, in, just like prematurely or just like not considering all the variables. And so I had been talking to other moms about it. I was talking to my, my, like in my mother-in-law about it and my sister-in-law, cause they both, you know, just like, I, I was just talking to people about it because I was just unsure. And I felt like every time I had a conversation with somebody, even with my husband, like I never felt like I had peace about whether or not it was like a good idea. And so that was even more unsettling for me. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm trying to ask other people what I should do when I really need to be asking the Lord, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, is she ready or not kind of thing? And so one day I'm like praying about it. And like I said, like, let's backtrack a little bit. I was not, every time I have other friends that homeschool. And when I look at them and I look at me, I'm like, I'm not that girl. Like I'm not the type of mom that's going to homeschool. Like I enjoy having like a separation, like a work-life balance because I create content at home. Like it's better in my mind to have the kids outside of my home in order to have some sort of like, you know, focus. Right. And so like, it was just hard for me to wrap my mind around this idea of homeschooling for the longest time, even though my husband was he's always wanted to homeschool our kids. Well, not always, but like definitely like the last few years, he's been like more of a homeschool person than anything else. Like it's always been me trying to convince him that them going to school is like the right thing because granted, like my husband stays at home. And so he would be the person that would be like leading and running the homeschool. And at the same time, you know, for me, I have an undergraduate degree in human development and child development for undergrad. And then I also have a master's degree in higher education. So I have, I'm very college educated, very, you know, degreed up, you know what I mean? And so I take education like very, very seriously. Not to say that my husband doesn't take homes or doesn't take education seriously, but like my husband, doesn't have a college degree. And I say that with such love in my heart because I know that that, even for him, it's a trigger because for a long time, he felt very self-conscious about that, even though like (laughs) for me looking from the outside in, he didn't need a college degree. Like he worked at Nike for basically a decade and worked his way up from the sales floor to corporate without a college degree. So like he's gifted, right? He's super intelligent. And I do not believe that a college degree is the measure of intelligence. I believe a college degree is a measure of competency in a specific skill set. So you've gone through different, you know, aspects of training and, um, you know, 
educational experiences where you can say, okay, I have mastered this skill, quote unquote, okay? Because we know some some of us got degrees that we really shouldn't have, but that's neither here nor there, okay? <laughs> but for real. Um, and so for my husband, you know, he's not as like, I would say militarized when it comes to like schedules and like sticking to things. Like he's very much so like go with the flow way more than I am. And that scared me when I thought about like us homeschooling because I'm like, babe, I gotta be honest with you. Like, I don't trust you. Like, I don't trust you to do homeschool at the caliber that the school that we send them to right now is doing. Cause like in my mind, I'm like, I'm not playing about my kids' education. I'm not playing about that. Especially me knowing how important early education is and especially up until, you know, grade three, like everything else is pretty much just added on. But like pre-K through third grade is such foundational years that I'm like, we ain't playing with that. So we not going to test drive you trying to do homeschool by yourself on our kids. And then two years in, three years, five years in, realize that like it ain't working. You know, I just, I was like always so like, so anti, but fast forward, you know, I'm talking to Sarai's teacher and she's just, you know, expressing to me some of the concerns she has with Sarai because Sarai is a creative like me. Well, really me and my husband are super creative, but like, I feel like I was able to, because of the way that I was brought up, I grew up as a military kid. So like, I'm very much so like, you know, controlled environments had to push myself really truly to be organized and even even that like I still struggled with that in school and stuff but I was also smart so like I could get away with certain things but I definitely felt like I was always playing catch up with people in my same situation like my sister was always more of the like studious one and I always felt like I was the you know artsy but forced myself to like focus kind of person. So Sarai is very much so similar. And I can tell because like, she's not slow. She can pick up things very quickly, but it's like, it's gotta be in a specific kind of way. It's gotta be more than just like you sitting her down and trying to tell her something. Like she has to add it to like music or a movement or like it has to be like multi-layered for her to like be able to tap in. And I think a lot of kids are like that. But you know, in a school system, everything is very much so like standardized and like, you know, one size fits all. And that works for some kids, you know? Like I can even tell with my, with my son, Micah, even though he's only two and a half, he can like retain information very quickly in comparison to Sarai and not because he's smarter than her but I think he just like has a different learning method and I can already see that at their ages right so I'm just like all right and given that I have a degree in like these different things especially like because when I was in undergrad I worked in toddler classrooms so I had to study (laughs) pre-k so if anybody could understand like different milestones and stuff that they need to be hitting out of between me and my husband is me so that also at the same time though because I have this degree it kind of held me back from even like having faith in my husband which I did feel like you know bad about because I could tell that it made him feel you know, a type of way, even though he appreciated me being honest with him about it, it made him feel a type of way, like as if I didn't believe in him. And that, but that's the, that was the truth of the matter. And that's, you know, something as like a wife, especially one who tries to honor the way God sees marriage. One of the things that I feel like in our wifely role, in our like, you know, helpmate role and submissive role, that also requires us to be honest with our husbands. Like sometimes it's not about like pumping up his ego and encouraging him and supporting him. We do those things in a sense of like supportive encouraging, but we don't want to inflate an ego that with, with, 
with a lie. You know what I mean? Like if I was to not be honest with Mark about how I really felt about him leading our children in like this homeschool journey, then we would be doing both of us a disservice. Like I wouldn't want to become resentful of him in any way. And I wouldn't want him to become resentful of me in any way that like I'm forcing what I want on him or that he's forcing what he wants on me. It, it can't be like that. And we've chosen to operate in our marriage where we give each other choice. Even if it's not the choice that the other one wants, we have to be honest about like, okay, what do you want? What do I want? And if it doesn't match up, where does the compromise come in? Or if we are feeling very strongly in both of what we wanna say, maybe it's not the time to make the decision. Maybe we need to really like ask the Lord, like, what do we do? And so this was one of those situations where we had for months argued about, you know, what to do about this situation with the whole school. So literally, so we've been, like I said, for months kind of going back and forth about this and not really being on the same page at all. Me being like, absolutely not. And shutting him down a lot in our conversations and you know, he would try to bring it up and he would try to tell me, you know, like, don't you believe that like, based on who I am as a person and what I've shown you in other areas of my life, like if it comes down to figuring something out that I don't know, don't you realize that like, I'll figure it out. And I'm like, yes, I believe in that. And I see that, but you're not, you're still not showing me like what I need to see as far as like being able to maintain even like a schedule with my youngest, like at home. Because I'm still trying to force his hand and force his like ways of doing things into the way that I think it should be done, right? And so I'm like, you're not showing me that you can put things on a calendar and schedule them out and actually follow them through. That's what I need to see. I need to see X, Y, and Z. And I'm laying all these things out to him. And it's like, he hears me, but it's also like, this is not his personality. Like he's not that person and he's only done that He's done it, but in a corporate setting, like in a school setting too. But it's like, when it comes down to it, like that's really not his personality. So to like hold him to this standard of doing it the way I see fit was unfair. And that was hard for me, (laughs) okay? So we just used to go at it about it, right? And it was one day that I had been praying about it and I finally had this feeling of like just look into it just look into it you know things are not as clear as you wanted them to be when it came to the school situation with Sarai's you know development and like whether or not she was ready for kindergarten kind of opened me up to like this idea of like all right well maybe let me stop saying no 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 and maybe just be open to what it would be like and so I had talked to some of my girlfriends about it who do it and I just started googling stuff like legit googling stuff watching some YouTube videos of just like moms that like do this and kind of like what their schedules look like and praying about it and being like okay Lord like is if this is something that like you want us to do like I will I will submit to that. I will, because at the end of the day, I want what you want for my kids. Even if that looks like something that I genuinely could have never saw, seen myself do before. And this is one of those things that I never saw myself doing. And so I wake up the next day and I just knew it. I'm like, we're supposed to homeschool. Like it, y'all, I kid you not, it was just like that. I don't remember having a dream. I don't remember like not, no big fight, no big, like nothing. It was literally, I woke up one day and I just felt it. Like the peace that I always look for whenever I'm asking God, like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Or is this what you want me to do? It's like, I can tell when he's like, yes. And it was like, I woke up and I just knew that that was what God wanted us to do. And so my husband had taken my two kids to school that morning. And when he got back home, I 
you know, said, hey, you know, I want to talk to you about something. And he was like, all right. And I told him, I was like, you know, I woke up this morning and I really felt like the Lord confirmed to me that we are actually supposed to homeschool our kids. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, that's crazy because I was literally in the car on my way home. He's like, I was on my way home and I had talked to one of our other friends who a husband and dad who his wife homeschools their kids about it because he had been trying to figure out a way to like talk to me more about it and kind of open me up. But at the same time, like after he talked to him, he also had been praying about it and was hoping that like the Lord would show me that it was the right thing to do or like just confirm to me at least and to him, you know, like what were we supposed to do? Because if homeschooling wasn't the answer, then like we would have been okay with that too. But just like having some sort of like resolve in the situation was what we had both been looking for. And so he was like, it's crazy that you're even bringing this up because I hadn't brought it up to him since, you know, the fight we had about it two or three weeks prior to like, there was nothing that would have told him that it was even on my mind. And so like, that's how we knew then too. Like, it was like, all right, this is what we're doing. Because in that moment, we knew that the Holy Spirit had been working on both of us and God gave us both confirmation as individuals to where when we came together, we were both on the same page and it didn't take either one of us trying to persuade the other one that like, this is what we're supposed to do. In so many other situations, like when we want something and we're not seeing eye to eye with our husbands about it, it's like we will try to strategize or figure out ways to like get them to want what we want. And this was a situation where I really felt like, you know, the Lord had to change my heart about it. Like he had to change me about it because I was just not where I was supposed to be. And it's not to say that sending our kids to the school that they're at right now is a bad thing. That school is great. It's a great place for them. And I, I wish that like they could stay, but at the same time, if that's not the will of God for this season of our lives as a family, then I have to submit to that. And sometimes it's hard to do that when you're so focused on what you want and what you like have planned, you know what I mean? Because my plan was not to homeschool our kids. And you know, I still don't even have full understanding as to why this is what God wants us to do. And I mean, I have my, I have my like assumptions, honestly, like just with like the way things are in the world now. And you know, like I know we all have different reasons for why we may or may not homeschool. And for me, I realized since making the decision, not only have I just genuinely gotten excited about it, which is so <laughs> funny to me because I was so anti it for the longest. Like my friends will tell you, like Jade was not about that life at all. And now being in this position where it's like, I'm, you know, I'm in my nesting mode first off about to have this baby, but I'm genuinely like spending this slow paced time before the baby comes. I'm, you know, looking on Pinterest, I'm looking on, uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube for like resources and curriculum ideas and all this stuff that is just, you know, the exciting part of starting something fresh, which is this, this journey of like deciding and figuring out like, all right, like if this is what we doing, how are we going to do it? And having fun with that. And like, you know, being cool with this idea of like, yeah, I've never, you know, homeschooled nobody before, but I also feel like I'm very capable. And so this is exciting and it's something new and I'm going to embrace it with a positive mindset, knowing that it's not going to be perfect. Like we're not going to make all the right decisions. We may have to switch curriculums if we don't feel like it's serving us or serving the kids well. Like we, we know, right? Like we know that it's not going to be perfect, but you know what? If God is telling us to do this, he's going to equip us and it's going to be great. And so this is our plan. Since agreeing and kind of finally getting to this place of like deciding that we're going to homeschool, 
the Lord gave me this strategy. Like, you know what? It's a real thing for you to not feel 100% confident in your husband's ability to teach because it's really not one of his strengths in this arena, if that makes sense. It's because it's your arena. This is God talking to me. <laughs> it's your arena, Jade, to take in and support, right? Because like he can't do the homeschooling by himself. He can't. He ha he needs support. He needs help. And that's where I come in. So we decided that when it comes to the kids and their actual like the education part of homeschooling that'll be my department and i will be the one who organizes like the curriculum chooses it organizes it you know actually comes in for the you know hour to two hours if that points of the day where we actually are doing like school work because if y'all know or maybe you don't know a lot about homeschool is not in actually like curriculum like teaching it's a lot more about like skill building and social building and lifestyle building so like they'll be helping my husband do things around the house but also incorporating you know finding ways to incorporate what we're learning in like our school time it's, and especially right now with them being so little like we'll only be doing school time like i said like an hour maybe a day and even that will split it. So I'll probably do like maybe 20 to 30 minutes in the morning of school time and then 20 to 30 minutes of learning in the afternoon. But outside of those times, my husband will be doing like different activities with them that underpin the, the skills or the, the topics that we're, the themes that we're going through in our curriculum. And so that's how we're gonna work together to make it happen because that way I still have the ability to have time away from the children to actually create content to do what I need to do right because I'm like the breadwinner in our family and then my husband will have the space to you know do the things that he already is doing now which is getting the kids up in the morning for school getting them dressed like we're still going to keep them on a school schedule so they'll get up and get dressed every day like brushing your teeth washing your face you know like making sure that like that is a part of the learning experience because that's what it means to be a, a functioning c citizen right like i'm not gonna allow my children to grow up without those social skills intact right and so really turning everything that we do into an opportunity for learning okay i think i put way too much of this this is the fresh glow dream blush from li the lip bar too I think I put way too much on, but it's all right. Oh, it's not bad. I'm gonna take the other side of the brush and kind of buff it out a little bit so it's not too crazy. Right? It's not too crazy. I don't think so. Mm, maybe a little. Let me add some powder to like calm it down a little bit. Okay, so I got my mascara. I'm using the Hourglass Unlocked Instant in Instant Extensions mascara which this is a really good one I like this I'm not always a fan of like spending more than like 10 15 dollars on a mascara but this one this one and the YSL beauty mascara actually are really good so if you want to like spend some coin on a mascara these two are, those two, the YSL one and this one, are definitely worth it. I like that a lot. It's such a good, like, base color for me. Okay, so I have these two. I have the Prototype Lip Oil. This is in the shade Obsessed and Can't Miss. So, I think I'm gonna do, let me see what these look like first. I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer on my lips just to like get a little brightness underneath. Ooh. Ooh, what y'all think? That's pretty. I think it's pretty. 
Cause you know, some lip oils are like a little bit too oily, but like this is like more of like a lip gel, if that makes sense. Like it's not sticky at all. It feels really, really like pillowy, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it, but that's pretty. I think that's cute. Now, let me just zhuzh up my hair a little bit, which it don't need much, okay? Because listen, I'm telling y'all, I used two things last night well yesterday because I was just trying to do something to just like you know let's just throw something together and see what happens because I knew today if I needed to like restyle my hair I would have the time and the energy to do so so it was really just like a throwaway like style wash and go style but y'all I had found this living proof curl elongator cream like in my stash of stuff and I have not touched this in years literally like I haven't touched this since probably 2021 maybe because I even when I did use the curl line which if y'all remember and have been with me that long like I was one of the curl ambassadors when they first launched this collection back in early 2021 but I tended to use the other styling products way more than this one because this one specifically is made for like kinky curls because it's their heaviest cream like moisturizer but I was like let's just try it because it's like I know the ingredients are great and I had been using the shampoo and conditioner from this line for forever I love the moisturizing oil from this line so I was like let's just play with it whatever so I used like a little bit of this on my freshly washed hair and then I set it with this Kiss Colors and Care foam mousse which just uploaded a roller set video using this and I really really liked it and so I was like let's just see like what it would be like you know these two together whatever and so I air dried for a few hours yesterday my hair was not fully dry when I went to sleep so I was already thinking in my head this is not gonna look good tomorrow because I'm not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing but y'all, like I woke up, I was like, wait, what? Like, I really woke up like this? Like how, like how? Because usually my hair ain't doing this with the throwaway wash and go like situation like I did. But anyway, here we are, okay? So I was like shocked the in the best way when I woke up this morning. So all I'm doing today is adding some oil so I'm using this Kinky Curly Perfectly Polished Nourishing Oil. I really like this a lot because it feels more like a serum than an oil in my hands and in my hair. So I use this a lot like on me and my daughter. But I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just smooth it on these curls for some shine and some nourishment. Like, we're loving her. We're loving this era of like rediscovering who my curls are like like this is just like a new journey I've never had my hair this short like if you've been here you already know we have talked about this journey my hair journey so much and if you go back like I used to be lipstick and curls and like I was known for my long curly hair and blah 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 and so to be now in this era where I'm regrowing my hair I'm relearning her it's just so exciting and so like liberating. So I'm excited about just like continuing to discover these like new little combos that just have my hair flourishing. But now that that's done, I also wanted to show y'all what I've been wearing fragrance wise the last few days that I have just been chef's kiss absolutely obsessed with. And it's this floor missing person body oil and the perfume that goes together y'all this is like well let me say okay so this is part of the olfactive family it's a floral musk okay it has notes of on the top okay skin musk bergamot nectar sheer jasmine the heart is fresh cyclamen neroli blossom orange flower and then the base is sandalwood australia oil blonde wood white musk okay this is literally like the perfect marriage between floral and musky which is like so my vibe okay <laughs> outside of like things that have like a vanilla base scent like i lean towards vanilla 
musky, sandalwoody stuff and floral stuff, but not too floral. Like I'm not like a citrusy kind of girl. So like I like when things smell a little bit deeper and warmer. I have been loving it. It's so good. Here, put it on here, on here. It's a little rollerball situation, which we love a rollerball, you know? I think we're done. I think we are ready. Like, yes, I feel good, y'all. If you are a homeschooling mom, please send me your tips, your tricks, your resources. I would love to find a curriculum base that is faith-based, okay, Christian-based. So if you have one that you love, it's not a requirement, but like it's definitely something that I would love to have already built into whatever curriculum that we choose for our kids. And obviously a curriculum that kind of spreads over multiple ages. And so, because essentially like we have all pre, -K, we'll have all pre kers essentially, um, except for Sarai who will be, I'm gonna start her in kindergarten in the fall since we're homeschooling. So I am gonna have her in kindergarten, but outside of that, like MJ and Micah will be pre-K and then, you know, this baby won't be in school yet, but you know, eventually. So I would ideally like to find something that I can stick with for years. Um, so if you have a curriculum that you really love, send it my way. If you watch anybody on YouTube, like other moms or like homeschoolers that do really good, like just like, curriculum prep videos and just like teaching like how they are like doing it please send them my way because i can use all the help i can get because i've never done this before and if there's any part of the journey beyond this point that you want to know more of definitely ask your questions down below because obviously i'm gonna share our journey but you know it'd be nice to have some like feedback from y'all as far as like what are the things that you are maybe fearful of like I was before homeschooling or things that like you want to just like see more into like how maybe we do different aspects so let me know down below in the comments if you're interested and yeah that that's all I got that's all I got for y'all today until next time I will see you in my next video bye